is sand and silt, the, probably the thing that uh, most people have issues with, especially if the well was installed properly. Sometimes these, uh, the screen uh, is not uh, sized properly or the backfill, the gravel pack. You can be sucking a lot of sand and it's not good, obviously. It's going to plug everything up, isn't it? Organic particulate matter, weeds, uh, weed seed rather, if you're pulling out of a pond, algae, uh, different things, doggone it, uh, even small fish, um, anything that's swimming around in there, you know, could get sucked up in the system. Uh, bacterial slime, there's some iron bacteria that will grow in the craziest places. You know, you how in the world does something like that grow? Down, down the well, there's no light. But they, they utilize the iron, iron oxide as a source of uh, oxygen or energy. And I, again, I'm kind of struggling here. I'm kind of pushing the limits of my understanding of what's going on here. But I do know that this slime will develop if there's a lot of a certain type of iron in the water and it can plug up the system. Algae uh, in surface water, if you've ever had a swimming pool, uh, you know, if you just let it sit there after the chlorine, chlor chlorination is, is, the chlorine's volatilized off, over time it's just going to get filled with algae, isn't it? And uh, in a water tank, if you put it in a clear tank, the sunlight's going to get in there, you're going to have a, a tank full of algae. If you store water, it needs to be dark, no light getting through the, through the, through the water. Um, then, of course, precipitation of uh, uh, iron, magnesium, and sulfur. Uh, in, the, uh, in the tubing itself, the supply lines can plug them up. Okay, so the first thing, first line of defense is to have pre-filters. And of course, we're talking about surface water here, right? Either a stream or a pond. You can see the one here on the left. Whoops, using the wrong button here. This has got the large perforations in it. Keep fish out, but let the uh, water in. Of course, it's not going to stop the fine stuff. This is an interesting looking uh, device. It actually spins and it uses pressure from the pump. It's pumped back out to the intake and this thing spins and when it does, see these nozzles, it's, it's spraying out against the, uh, the screen and it's keeping things from getting packed in against it as it's sucked in towards the intake. It's pretty crazy, but it works. Uh, that, you've really got to have some serious problems though to, to justify something like this. You know, nine times out of 10, this is going to be satisfactory, unless you're trying to put, uh, uh, pull way too much water through this. If it's undersized, you can see it'd be an issue. You want to oversize your screen. It's a good idea with any screen, any filter. Okay, if you have problems with sand in, in your well, and I know a lot of folks do, uh, this is called a sand separator. This is the actual uh, model, look right here, Lacos makes a bunch of these, but this is how it works, the inlet, and then what you do is this thing, it's got a, a cylinder, and the water comes in, and, it, and the water, because of the way it enters, it just spirals like a tornado. And the, since the sand is heavy, it will settle out, and then the water goes out the top. And, of course, you have to match the, the flow with the size of your uh, container or your, uh, your cylinder there, right? So, again, you need to talk to a professional. And that's what's happening here. It's coming in, and it's going out. And it... it Enters the, or you separate it, you can remove the sand down to the bottom here. Very, very important. Now, if you, again, are using surface water, this is what most people are going to need to do uh, if they're using drip especially because you will plug it up. These are sand uh, filters. Uh, media filters is probably the more correct uh, term for them. Swimming pool filters, whatever. This coming from the pond comes here. And then you've got two. Now, it's nice to have two. You don't have to have. But what the beauty of this is that you can keep running one, keep your system on while you're back flushing the other. Otherwise, if you just got one, it needs to be back flush. You have to turn the system off and then flush it and then turn it back on. But what happens here is water comes in. Let's say this one is plugged up or getting full and it's just not flowing right because you've got a pressure drop, too much junk in it. So you, you turn this off. Water comes through here. It comes through and it's clean. It comes out, goes up and out. I think that's the way they have that plumbed. I didn't talk to the guy. I just got this off the internet, this picture. But that makes sense to me, okay? <laughs> uh, don't, don't hold me to it. It's, yeah, you, you can tell it's easy, right? Simple to look at. I mean, darn. Anybody can figure that one out. But two are very, very useful when you want to keep the system running. Okay, then as you step down, after you get all the major junk out of the water, and then you're looking at getting silt out, that's what these other filters are. Disc filters 
or that's what exactly what it is. It's a bunch of discs. Now, I just as soon as I said that, this person obviously, obviously ought to have some kind of a pre-filter. He's got too much gunk on here, okay? Or that, or he never cleans it out. But these filters, these little discs have little slits in them that run the, the length from the inside to the outside. And so you have a lot more surface area to screen silt out than you would with a regular screen filter. And so you stack these and you have, look at all the surface area this way and uh, horizontally through the, through the length of the, the, the depth of these discs. Excellent filters for, for silt. And then, of course, the standard screen filter. If you're going to get one, guys, 150 mesh. Uh, that's, that's kind of the, the safe mesh 150 in terms of getting most of the stuff uh, out of the water that's going to clog up your system, your emitters.